Our anniversary is this week and I always build something for Jamie. We don't really buy each other things for anniversaries, birthdays, Christmas, things like that. We save up and take a big trip in the spring. But last year I built her a bench. This year I'm thinking I'll make her some huge corbels. We'll see how it goes. So to get started, I've got this common board 1x12. This part here was a 2x12 and I've already got it nice and cut out, kind of the shape I want, the general shape. Now I've got the rough shape of the 1x common board cut out. And I kind of, the first time I was working with this, I was just kind of roughing out some shapes. And I'm gonna cut these other shapes out into the common board. So I gotta kind of figure out how I wanna trace those on there. And then that's gonna be the outer layer of the corbel. It's starting to come together. We're, we've almost got a half a corbel here. I've got everything cut out. Now it's time to glue and staple everything together. I'm just gonna use some lightweight patch and paint spackling. This is from DAP. I'm gonna be filling these nail holes in from the uh, nail gun. So I'm gonna cut this area flat right here, and this is where I'm gonna attach the turned piece. I'm making my own trim for the bottom of the corbel, and I'm gonna double these layers up. I'm just cutting three inch strips out of this common board, and then I'll cut some two inch strips and cut them with a Roman OG bit on the router table. I've routered some trim out and cut a 45 on one end. So what I'm doing right here is just making sure that this is flush, and then I'm gonna mark this edge. When I'm doing trim, I like to mark it out, not measure it out. Now that I've got that front piece of trim on there, I'm just gonna put a little glue here. and staple that up. If I got a little gap, that's all right. I can either fill that with some lightweight or I can come back and sand that smooth. You can see I got a little gap here. My wood's not straight. I'm gonna clamp that all together. All right, now I'm gonna be putting a second layer of trim on, same way as I did the first, just to add a little more detail. The corbels are coming together nicely. I want to do a turned detail right here. I'll probably make it about four inches long, I think, and hang it down just right in the front of this right here. So I've got this old tree limb. Best guess is it's ornamental plum. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up and use this to make the detail part. So we're gonna go from this to this.
Now that I've got these turned up, I've got to attach them. I used my big vice grips to go ahead and chop the top of the head of this screw off. And I'm gonna use these kind of basically just like a dowel screw. I've just got a 5 ths little drill bit on here to kind of help things out. Throw a little glue down there for a good measure. Then I use those same vice grips to screw that down in. Making sure I'm centered. Give it a good little push down so I've got a mark. Now we're gonna do a lot more glue. That's how I attach them. I've got 60 grit sandpaper on my random orbital and I am going to sand and smooth off all the edges but I'm also going to round the edges because I want this to look old and an old corbel or piece of wood does not have smooth, crisp, sharp edges. This little wire brush is my secret weapon. I'm gonna put it up in my drill here. And I highly recommend wearing gloves because if this gets away from you at all, it can really tear you up. So, and safety glasses too. You, if one of these little wires come off, you don't want that in your eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the wood and use it to remove kind of some of the softer pith in between the wood grains. And that's gonna give me a fun aged look on this wood. It's kind of hard to see the ridges but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. It's getting rid of all of that softer wood so that it looks like it's been aged way past its time. These are pretty much done. I'm gonna use some DIY Dark and Decrepit and I'm just putting it on, applying it with my Zebra Palm Pro. This Dark and Decrepit is water-based, so I can put it on with just a regular paintbrush and then it just washes right out. It's also got a built-in sealer, so I could just leave this. I'm gonna put the shellac on just because I want that extra chipping from the milk paint, because painting on raw wood, even with one coat of this dark and decrepit, is probably not gonna quite give me the chipping that I want. We'll see, it may all chip off, and I might be like, well, I guess I gotta do this again. I've got the dark and decrepit on here. It is not quite dry. It dries out pretty quick, but I still got a little bit of dampness. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the Zinzer shellac. The reason I'm doing it before it's dry is because I want it to stay tacky. I'm trying to get a real chippy look. And if you put these sealers on and you start painting and things while your undercoats are still tacky, sometimes as that dries, it'll give you a nice crackle effect. So I'm gonna try to make that happen. It doesn't always work, but that's what we're going for. So the shellac has been on here for about five minutes. I went in. I went inside, mixed up my Sweet Pickens milk paint in flour sack with warm water. I used the immersion blender. I didn't add any extra bond to it because I want to get the chipping, so let's see what happens. I'm using my Paint Pixie brush in an inch and three quarters, and then I'm gonna use my Paint Pixie French round to get in all the details. This is the Paint Pixie French Round and it works great for getting down in these little details. I'm not minding a little bit of the dripping. That's going to be okay if I get a bunch of drips and things. I'll probably just sand them off anyway when I just stress this. So not a big deal. I got Jamie's dad here, Jack. He's helping me out getting the paint on here quick before this shellac dries out. She's off at football practice with Redrick, so we'll see when uh, she gets back. I'll have to shut the garage down quick when I see her coming down the street. I'm trying to leave it as a surprise. We'll see. I've got one coat of milk paint on here and you can see we're getting a little bit of crackle, a little bit of chipping. Not quite as much as I wanted, but I think with the second coat, we'll get a lot more and then I'll sand it a little bit and help it out some. So this is coat number two on here and you can see some areas where some crackles coming in. It also made the areas where I did the wire brushing with the drill 
stand out quite a bit more. You can really see them here. And when I distress those, you're gonna see that even more. I'm gonna try to get this to chip a little bit. I'm just gonna use some 220 sandpaper. I may even wet distress if I feel like it needs it. I'm gonna try to bring out some of that crackling by sealing with Sweet Pickens oil wax. I've just got a sample size here. This is the dark version of it. And I've poured some out in a little plastic cup. That way I don't have to use any more than I have to. And I don't contaminate it by getting any chips or anything if the milk paint flakes off. I'm using a chip brush. This is just 50 cent brush that we got down at Walmart. I'm gonna throw this away when I'm done. I'm gonna just layer this on. You just kind of spread this on, let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes, and then you wipe it back off with a rag. The hope is that most of this wipes back off and just sits down in all the little cracks and the, the imperfections in the wood and the cracks in the paint. I'm using a lint-free rag. We get these from Ikea, they're about 70 cents. It's called the Tecla, and they work great. It's just dry now. By the time I'm done, it'll have a decent amount of oil wax on it, but no biggie, it'll wash out. Oh yeah, that's doing just what I wanted. That is doing exactly what I wanted. It's giving kind of a nice age to this white, but it's leaving all the crackles and dings and chips and all the imperfections I added into it a lot of character and depth. All right, so I got the lighting kind of dim so you can see the difference. This one here with the oil wax on it is looking like it is fresh off the farm. And this one looks old and beat up, but it's been hanging out at the country club collecting golf balls. It doesn't look crusty like that one does. All right, so the oil waxing is all done. I used half of a sample to do these two to kind of give you an idea of how much you can get done with a sample of the oil wax in the dark. It comes in black and also clear as well. These things are kind of heavy, probably weigh about 25 pounds each. Quick rundown of the products I used. I used the dark and decrepit to stain them and get them dark. Then I shellacked over the top of that. I painted with Sweet Pickens milk paint in flower sack while the shellac was still tacky and that got me some pretty good crackle. I used Sweet Pickens oil wax in the dark color and then I wiped it off really quick. I didn't let that sit on there for the recommended 15 minutes. They still have pretty good sealing properties on them but I didn't want them to get dark and I feel like that worked pretty well to bring out the crackle but not really change the overall color of the paint so much. It did darken it a little bit and kind of fade it it's not the crisp white that it was, but they look really nice and aged now. You can get all of these products at jamierayvintage.com except the shellac. We don't carry that on the website. I'll be sure to put a link down below for you. If you like this video, be sure to share it. Make sure you're hitting that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.